damn, that transition. <laughs> We're enjoying a nice, soft, pretty moment then. Huh? Right, Jace. Hellscape. Right. Back with you. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka Geek XX Chic, and we are back with the final section of the final season of Arcane. It's crazy that we're here, but with three episodes at a time, obviously we're going to move through a little bit faster than normal, but you know what? I'm looking forward to it. This season has been absolutely crack a lacking from the second it started, and while it'll be sad to see the end of this journey, I think it's, a, a, it's exciting to know that there's a lot of prospects of what could be possible in this series, uh, or in this franchise, I should say, once this is done. Done. But anyways, let's jump into the next episode in the third arc, which is pretend like it's the first time we saw the end of the last arc was very sad. We lost Isha. We lost Van. I mean, I don't, we didn't see Vander being taken out, but I think we can pretty much assume that he's not surviving this one. And um, we see that Caitlyn betrayed uh, Ambessa. So really, that's put her in a position where going back to Piltover probably is not going to go well for her either. And we see Jace is back and Jace took out Victor or seemingly took out Victor. And that caused all of the people that Victor had healed to also basically go the way of the dodo. And we now know that Mal has some sort of superpower. I mean, that was from this episode before, but we didn't see anything more of her. But we still have not seen anything of Echo and Heimerdinger. So I'm hoping in this final act, we'll get an idea of what's happened to them and where they are and maybe they can give some insight into what's going on with jace so lots to jump into excited to get into this episode so we're going to do that just before i do though a reminder that if you'd like to be in the know of when i drop episodes to this show or anything else please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell all right that out of the way let's get into the episode right now <gasps> echo i just realized echo was on the wait have they been changing up the records every time and I just didn't notice? <laughs> Maybe. Very possible with me. Echo! He's back! Oh, is he back in, um, where he grew up? Oh, relax, jumpy. This is a different, a different reality? Uh, did you just throw that? Yeah, look at her hair. And that's the shop he used to when he was with the other dude. Benzo, yeah. What in the seven sumps is all this racket? Oh my gosh. No wonder Jace is messed up if he went through anything like this. Genius and madness. Maybe Exactly. What has gotten into him? Please tell us. <laughs> Yeah, that's not just that's not just for Benzo, that's for us. But I was wondering if there was a whole like maybe multiverse alternate timeline thing possibly going on with Hextech. And that's why Jace is acting the way he is, is because in other timelines he tried to save Victor and it didn't work. That makes so much more sense. Oh, man. With the beard. See, this is crazy because... You know he knows this isn't real, but he doesn't want to, like, end it either because who'd want to, right? I feel like I woke up in the wrong universe. This is what happens when you There's still plenty of time before the competition. this depth of focus, the way that okay. <laughs> it actually looks when you look at something close to you. My leash. Oh, no. <laughs> Sit down. Ratchet and Clay. Can't remember their names. Trouble in paradise. Clagger, there we go. When we finally got the hybrids to feed Yeah, that mustache is not it. Where would you be without her? Interesting question. Is he driving the hexagon hey, pattern? Wow. What would they do without you? There would probably be some arm flailing. <laughs> Most likely. That cracked voice was not a good indicator. You think I'm holding myself back? I think you're too smart to spend your life in a bar. That is true. <laughs> Interesting in this world of powder being like the selfless one. Ew. We never need to see that. It looks like he's vomiting Hextech. That's not good. Awkward consequences. It seems the <laughs> way he wielded that pencil like a sword also scattered us across time. Man, I thought I was going to real Heimerdinger though. How long have you been here? 1,128 days, six hours, and 20 minutes. That's uh, give it more than a year. 
I grew skeptical you'd arrive, even during my unusually long lifetime. <laughs> my man said, I'm, old. I'm thousands of years old and I still didn't think he'd show up. Please tell me you figured out a way to get us home. Oh, well, you don't like it here? Interesting. That is a veritable conundrum. And since when did he learn to play guitar? No, it isn't all bad. I've been able to accomplish wonderful hey, things like in this I became world. a musician. It's great. <laughs> this place will grow on you. You'll see. Grow on me? Once again, Heimerdinger forgetting that humans do not live long. I'm gonna find a way back with or without you. Uh, oh, uh, uh, I was gonna go see Vi. Okay, Jace with no beard. So when was this? Is this where we now gonna see what happened to all three of them? This is what I'm thinking. Okay. Yo, what's with the puking? See this. I get the idea. We could just do it off camp. Oh no, hammer broken. So that's why he's a new weapon. Is anyone out there? Interesting. So the Hextech sent Heimerdinger and Echo to like a beautiful version of their world and it sent Jace to hell. <laughs> I think maybe Echo was onto something about you pissing off the Hextech, Jace. Did you bring me here? Where are we? That looks like Victor's staff. Wait! Or is it the... I don't remember what the guy who gave him the, the crystal, because he has the crystal. Maybe not. Maybe it's the guy who, the mage that saved him when he was a kid. What can do that? <clears throat> Literally freeze a man or burn a man into his tracks? It's like Hextech patterns in that skull, too. I can't be. Oh, this is the pill to he went. Oh. Yeah, his timeline's significantly, le significantly less fun. I came to you. Well, you weren't gonna figure it out yourself. Zero loss chemical energy cell. The cog again. Sorry, sis. Someone's wigging out over his project and having an identity crisis. Oh god, what happened to what happened to Vi in this world? She's dead. How? That's not funny, Echo. He's so not joking. Just because you're having a bad day, don't take it out on me. Was it you? Damn, Echo! You gave us the tip. We went on that job because of you. Go, before I do something I regret. Believe me, I'm working on it. Oh, that's sad. Cause this is not, this is not the powder you know, slash Jinx. But I get it's not easy for him to emotionally dissociate that, right? Like at this point, Jinx has done a lot of harm to him, so. But it's not fair though. But it looks like in this world, Piltover and Zahn are actually getting along. <gasps> Damn, that's crazy. But look at the difference. The bridge is actually like a functioning market. In the other world, it's a military zone. I'm starting to see why Heimerdinger didn't want to leave. This place is pretty much utopia, with the exception of Novi. Is this Heimerdinger saying? These parallels between where they ended up is crazy. Wow, Hextech has jacked this place up. Oh, Vi died on the job in this world. Isn't that crazy how one little change could just change everything? One little thing. Because the fact that none of the kids got hurt in that explosion in, in the main timeline is actually a miracle. Let him turn. I was right, it was Heimerdinger singing. Thank you very much. Okay, who knew that he had this whole artistic side of him? Looks like he was being held back by all that science. <laughs> I like that the song had a, a bunch of comparisons and allusions to science as well. That's cool. Now, see, this makes it extra sad because if Jace had gone to the same place that Heimendinger and Echo had gone, he probably would have killed Victor. Oh, Lord, is this what happened to the to the Shimmer people in this world? They just... Oh, wow, this can't be this. Yeah, that's where you should 
Not the vacuum was called taken out by your own hammer. Oh God. Yeah, no, Jace did not have a good time. I'm starting to understand why he looked like he looked. I meant that quite literally. I don't believe this can be done. <laughs> He's like I wasn't being obtuse. I need a professor. Better yet, a partner. No glass nozzles. Mm -hmm. How could I forsake a brilliant lad? I in knew here? it. Just appealed to that ego a little bit, huh? Not to mention the fact that Heimendinger is a science lover. Down, deep down. And scientific people love solving problems or creating opportunity where there is none. Yeah, that's gotta hurt, bro. That hammer landed right on your leg. Is that bone? Is that a bone sticking out? I see why you and the old hammer were beefing. Oh, man, Jace. Both you and your girl just got some rotten stuff happening to you over the past year, huh? My girl Mel mentally tortured you and whatever the hell this wasteland is. Mm. Ooh. Is that drinkable? Oh, you're back. Are you real? Oh, I don't think that's gonna be okay, Jace. You need some of the antibiotic, I don't know, the Hextech antibiotics? Jeez, please stop trying to do that. So Hextech like erodes things? It's almost acting like a form of acid. What the hell is he eating? And also, whatever the heck he's eating is probably not doing so much for his sanity either. Please. Exactly like this. Yep, that's full-fledged madness right there. Could also be an extensive se fever dream, but uh, yeah, I don't think Jace is ever going to be okay, guys. Oh, his leg is very messed up. Interesting because Victor also had an issue with one of his legs. A parallel. But kudos to Jace, he made himself a brace out of whatever the hell he found down there, and that couldn't have been easy. Oh. You did it, buddy! No one can say you're not a survivor, that's for sure. And he left the hammer down there, which is probably good. Who knows what it was turning into. Echo, I don't know what this is all about, but if you're trying to apologize, dragging me through the... Oh, I'm glad that he felt bad. <laughs> Pain at this? I had this dream. She oh. looks so badass. <laughs> you don't know the half of it. She's nothing scared her. No, not my sister. Everything scared her. She just was better at hiding it. But I was strong because she was afraid. Well, her fear of losing us is what made her fight so hard. Look at her! This powder understands her sister. Is that what this is about? You want me to change? No. Please don't. No. You're good. You're Gucci the way you are. Thanks. Your ideas change the world. I can't shake the feeling that that's who you're supposed to be. Sometimes taking a leap forward means leaving a few things behind. Facts. You better preach. Out with it. What do you want from me? Your brain. You figured out Hextech before most people. Well, I mean... Jace figured it out to a degree, but it was definitely Jinx who figured out how Hextech could work and all the nuances long before Jace did. If anyone can wrap her mind around it, it's Powder. Oh, we're doing this walk again, huh? Oh, God. Have you learned to fight since the last time, Jace? Because these things are still here. They're still moving. Oh, you're just not scared of them now. Okay. That makes sense. Are they alive or just twitching? Hmm. This is also bittersweet because in a different world, in a different world, Powder could have been such a force for good. This is cool. I almost feel bad for Echo to go back to his world and then him and Powder are going to be back to being enemies again. Science is sciencing! Oh, that's getting closer. They soon they showed the monkeys that literally changed everything. The clapping monkeys. Okay, that looks... That looks like what he's been drawing. Uh-oh. So, what does it do? Uh, we don't know yet, actually, other than take us to different worlds. So, what does it do? You just asked... Time loop! No, I didn't. I'm too tired for Time games. travel. No, 
I didn't. Yep. It's bringing him back in time each time he pulls that thing. It's a time loop. Huh? A time loop? Huh? A time, a time loop. loop. <laughs> Stop hitting Heimendinger with things. How far did you go? Just a few I seconds. don't know. A second? Yeah. Try going back further. Take it slow, lad. <laughs> Jason's like, more! Faster! <laughs> going too far too quickly is what ended up put us in this mess in the first place. This looks very... This looks like a lot more. Infinity loop! That's so cool. Okay. Oh, God! High my finger! The limit is four seconds. Are you certain, my boy? What were the indicators? Uh, you blowing up! Is that Trust enough? Me. It's four seconds. Amazing. Please go change before the party. The fact you didn't realize there's a piece of Heimendinger on his face. You can start by attending your party. One's thoughts are more easily gathered in isolation. And what's the point of a device like this if you don't enjoy the time you have? Ooh, bars. You're young, kid. Live a little. That's what Heimerdinger is saying. Goodness. But it's so funny because Heimerdinger telling them to take time is so necessary because rushing is what got them into this mess. But again, as Jace told them back in season one, Echo's not going to live a thousand years, so they really can't wait too long. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But again, I think he's talking about a couple of years at most. Hey, where are we? What is this maelstrom? Not sure. She said something about making an entrance. Ah, she does love a spectacle, eh? That apparently does not change no matter what dimension. You've always meant the world to me, Benzo. Oh. Oh, well, you, uh... You're all right. Ah, oh, don't get all mushy <laughs> on me now. Hey. <laughs> like you the big man Misty, are you? Ah, these damn allergies! Exactly. It's air here, it's dusty. I have the feeling that you'll be running this place soon. So... So There's cool. a chance for us yet. Hey. You. Breathe. Did you? His face is still jacked up, though. Greatest thing we can do in life is find the power to forgive. Okay, so that happened in this world. But looks like Selko found the note in this world and they were able to turn it around. Oh. Clagger had a crush on his buddy? All the tea we would have we missed because they died. Come on. Okay. Patty said, "Let me put my hair down." This is so cool. Considering last season we saw this type of an interaction with them, but they were fighting. Remember, the flash between them being kids playing a game to them actually battling to the death almost, and now they're actually genuinely dancing. Where'd you learn those moves? He's black. Just <laughs> Joking. Not all of us know how to dance. I used to dream the Undercity could be like this. But somewhere I got consumed by all the ways it wasn't. Oh, that is a bar. I gave up on it. That is such a bar about your viewpoints in you. life. Do you ever wish you could just stay in one moment? We all have at least once, I think. Sorry. I, no, it's... I, uh, I kind of hate you in our other world. This is going to get weird. <laughs> Can we just pretend like it's the first time? Episode title. Um, not for nothing, but I'm loving Jinx's eye makeup. I may have to try to recreate that. Very 80s glam. Damn, that transition. <laughs> We're in a nice, soft, pretty moment then. Huh, right, Jace. Hellscape, right. Back with you. But no, I absolutely love that line about how you, how you, the way you view things affects it, everything, right? Like Echo just said, if you'd focus more on the potential of Zon versus what was wrong with Zon, he would have had a different outlook entirely on so many things. That's pretty. Echo, my lad. I was about to say, what are you doing, Heimendinger? I only need to hook up the final power supply. Can you reach? Are you okay? Bro, you did that in a night? What is Heimerdinger? Is he actually... What, what, what sorcery? Is that where he stole his new weapon? That looks like the new weapon he's got. This is where it all started, isn't it? The end of Piltover. 
Because of Hex Tech. What about Zon? Oh, you don't care. Why did you ever give me this? Why? Okay, so it is supposed to be that mage. Just tell me there's a chance. He's not really the speaking type, it looks, like, it looks like. I don't know. I do wish I could apologize to Miss Powder for co-opting her space like this. I think she's fine. <laughs> Oh wow, they're gonna leave right now? Poor powder of this world. Oh! You're still alive! Hi! Alright, he said I passed the torch to you. Unless that was Jace in this dimension. Never a dull moment. <laughs> Since I've met you, lad, I've truly lived. What? what? No, wait! Oh, how many are staying? I kind of get that though. He likes it here. But he understands Echo doesn't want to stay. Or maybe he needed to do this because there's no way otherwise. I won't fail. I don't want Heimerdinger to die, guys. Please tell me he just stays in this dimension. So that's who he was talking to. Not at the same time both of them going back. So was that really the... No, he does have the jewel. I was going to say, was that really the mage? Or was it actually them? Wait, what? Oh, is that the one she... Is this the original now? So she got her... She got her echo back. So is that closer to cheating <laughs> than what happened between the two of them? Powder? Just don't talk about it. Don't talk about it, Powder. It never happened. What happened? She's like, this again? But I mean, that's the one she originally had and fell in love with, so. But where did Heimendinger just disappear, guys? I'm not okay with that. Oh, wow. She had a bunch of those crystals still. She just never used them. Uh, all right. Well, that was a fun episode. That was really, really fun. Um, yeah, we finally have that missing piece. I've been asking for several episodes now. Where's Heimendinger? Where's Echo? I want to know what's going on with them. And I mean, obviously we saw Jace, but I mean, it's good to know what he went through to explain why we're seeing the Jace that we saw in the last act being the way that he is, looking the way that he did. And um, they didn't go to the same place, unfortunately. I don't know how to put it. I don't know if it's good or bad, but let's talk about Jace's journey first because it's the shorter one of what we saw. We see that he was sent to a timeline where Piltover and Zaun are completely eradicated. At least the version of them that he knows was erad eradicated by Hextech. There is just, you know, people have turned into... I almost think that this is what Victor would have turned into potentially eventually. Right, the husk type of bodies and the more mechanical looking bones and stuff. It almost looks like the way that Victor's body had changed after he was put in that cocoon of Hextech. And so I don't know if I want to, I don't think it's fair to say that the people are all dead so much as they've been transformed into something that one would probably not associate with life. And we see that by and large, all the infrastructure, trees, everything that makes the world, the world that we know is gone. And it's just Hextech in its wake. And Jace is understandably, first of all, terrified and confused. But then when he's taking in this world, it's just, you know, fear and trauma, you know, back to back. And then we see that while he was running from whatever, I guess, humanity turned into after this whole thing happened, he ends up falling into a pit, breaking his leg and being trapped down there for, I mean, I'm going to assume what was months and months and months. And... I can only imagine like the isolation, the fear, he's in excruciating pain, there's barely any water, God knows what he was eating, like, and then everything looks like it's been poisoned by the hex, I'm going to say poisoned because of the effect that it's having on Jace, but everything has been touched and tainted, and we heard Victor say in the last act, Jace, you've been touched by the arcane, but it's different, right, so... It's so true in that in Victor's case, it looked like the Hex Tech had healed him or at least it had compensated for the areas where Victor needed help, right? Victor's physical body was failing and the Hex Tech basically took over all those things that weren't working and 
replace them with hex tech so he could continue to live. But we saw for the most part, Victor's mind and his thoughts and his belief system stayed intact, like his consciousness was still there. I still have a mindset of that the hex tech was influencing to an, influencing him to a degree, but by and large, Victor was still Victor. Whereas with, with Jace, whatever happened in that timeline, the hex tech just completely took away everything that you were, if it makes sense. Like whatever those husks of people were, that wasn't humanity. That wasn't the way that we know ourselves to be human. And I don't think any of those people could talk or think or experience things anymore. So Anyway, we see that, I mean, we got to give Jace's props. It's not easy. Like, that's true survivalism. And considering that he was pretty much lived his whole life as a, you know, a spoiled kid in Piltover, that really showed that he had the grit in him all along. Like, it sucks that it had to be that to bring it out of him, but it absolutely showed that Jace is no pushover. And he managed to not only survive in those conditions, but he figured out a way to brace his leg, which, I mean, we see his leg does not look okay. It looks like the, the hex is actually potentially infiltrating him. Him, the same way it kind of did Victor, but obviously not the same type of hex tech. But anyway, he, eventually, he eventually got himself to a point where he was able to crawl the very long way out of that hole. And it's interesting because he was in a literal hole, but one could also say mentally and emotionally he was in one as well. And during that time, I really liked the way they illustrated his time at the bottom of that pit, how he went through everything. Like, we know that he's been going back and forth for a while now over whether or not his pursuit of Hextech and his pursuit of using Hextech for, Hextech for things was good or bad, whether or not he'd crossed the line. And remember, the last time he interacted with Victor, it wasn't happy, right? It was Victor basically telling him, you messed up. I told you to get rid of the Hex core. Everything's going to be bad from now on. And of course, Jace not wanting to believe it because in his mind, he was saving his best friend and the Hextech was a step forward. I really love the sound bites that they use of him saying things like, I'm trying to create magic. We, you know, I'm trying to change the world. And I genuinely believe that in his heart, Jace believed that what he was doing was for the greater good. And in his head, though, he knew that the warnings that Heimendinger and Victor gave him were valid. The concerns were real. And he kind of just pushed those aside for his own personal ambitions. And, you know, he's questioning that now that he's had this time in his pit and seen an extreme of what could go wrong if Hextech ran rampant. He's now wondering if is this his fault? You know, is it because he's the one who pushed? Is he the one who made all the mistakes? Is he the one who listened to the wrong advice? You know, even him hearing Mel saying like, oh, like this is for, like, what would she say? Something along the lines of this is for the advancement of Piltover. And he's kind of like going, no. And I mean, I hope he doesn't blame Mel because Mel, when she was encouraging him last season around the hex tech, it wasn't because, you know, again, she wasn't looking at it purely from a state of, of greed and profit. She was more like, I do think that scientific advancement is necessary and I don't think that should stop. But she wasn't a scientist. You know what I'm saying? She was just looking at the overall potential benefits the way that Jason presented it and wanted to encourage somebody that she believed in. So I'm just hoping he doesn't transfer that onto Mel is my point when they meet up again. But I still think, unfortunately, I think my ship might be dead where that's concerned because both of them have been through a lot and I don't think they're going to have any kind of time for each other when they do meet up again, but digressing. So we see that Jace is kind of going through all of this, just a lot of, one could say, overanalyzing, overthinking, um, not to mention, I feel like, like I said, the hex tech was definitely messing with his mind at the same time. So between that and we saw him like drawing on the walls and trying to figure out, again, his brain working overtime, trying to figure out how to get out of there or how he got there, trying to map out everything that led to this point. And it really did to, I think it broke, like something in Jace is broken. There's no doubt. Like I'm not just talking about his leg I do think mentally there has been a snap for him being in that place for as long as he was and alone that's the other thing right it's not healthy for us as humans to spend too much time alone like yes a little bit of time here and there is good but for Jace I mean we heard Heimendinger say that in his timeline he was there for over three years because he said over a thousand days right it's only 365 days in a year again I don't know how the calendar works in this cartoon world but I'm assuming it's similar so somehow Heimendinger was there for almost three years so time and space are very different on wherever they are and I wondered about that in the last in the last act I was like, I don't think the time travels the same way it does in our world. So if that's the case, it may have been so much longer for them. And yeah, we see that in the Piltover and Zaun of the main timeline we've been following, it's been a year. Whereas with these three, it's potentially been as much as three or more, like in their timeline. So point is, Jace has been alone for way too long. <laughs> He's been alone for way too long. And it's definitely broken something in him. And even though he did manage to fight his way out, survive getting into that pit, and then get to following what he sees as the mage that 
gave him that little piece of inert crystal all those years ago. And again, I'm not certain if that's real. I still don't know 100% of what, if Jace was actually seeing that mage or if he just manifested that as something to keep him focused and give him a purpose in this wasteland. I'm not sure, but the jewel in his, in his wrist does seem to be real. I don't know if that was caused because Jace did something or because, again, he was eating all that hex tech. Maybe something about the crystal embedded itself. I'm not sure, but the point is he followed that and he got to kind of the center of it all and someone who was holding a weapon that looked a lot like Jace's hammer. And now I think he's thinking that whoever the version of that person was, was potentially him in that timeline. And I'm thinking it is because when it opened its eyes at the end, it seems to have the same eye color as Jace. Like that's what I noticed, but maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, um, we see that he is like, there's gotta be a way to change it. Like there's, there's gotta be, this is where it started. This is what ended Piltover. And I think it's interesting that he only mentioned Piltover in that, not Zon, which is I think where he started. He only cared about Piltover. Oh, Piltover's over because of this. And I'm like, we're still, we haven't grown yet, <laughs> Jace. And again, maybe, maybe it's just because Piltover was where everything was shiny and glistening and that was his home. But I just feel it's interesting that he, his choice of only acknowledging that one of these places was destroyed is, is very telling to me about where his mindset is at and what he thinks is more important, which again was kind of what Mel and Caitlin and Heimendinger and everyone was trying to get Jace to understand is it's not about Piltover versus Zahn. It never should have been. But anyway, so he gets back talks to whatever this figure is, and he's like, if there's a way to fix it, then send me back. I'll fix it. Like, he basically feels like this is all his fault, and that he's got to be the one to fix it. And so we see that things happen. He takes that weapon that was being held by whatever that person is, possibly him from another timeline, and he ends up getting sent back. And that makes sense. I think, you know, we could pick up from straight to uh, the last act where he shows up. And yeah, he's glitching hard, which I think is partly because of what they've been through, but also because, like I said, whatever's going on with his leg and whatever he was eating in that world, I think it's definitely affected him and he's still not okay. Like, it looks painful and it looks very unnatural the way that the hex tech is effect uh, affecting him. So I don't know what's going on with him because we didn't see any of that happening with Heimendinger or with Echo, which we're going to get to in a second. So I just think that unfortunately Chase just got the really, really bad, you know, this amusement park of Hextech, he got the bad part. He got the bad ride. <laughs> the one that is no fun at all. And so anyways, it's good to see what Jace went through. So now we can understand a lot better why he basically came back on a mission, find Victor, killing people without thinking twice about it and just blasted Victor without a conversation, right? So, I mean, he did, I shouldn't say without, I mean, when, when he was talking through Salo, or yeah, he was talking through Salo, he did kind of say we got to destroy Hextech, but I mean, if you think about it, Jace is already telling Victor, I'm going to kill you when I see you because you are Hextech. There's no way to separate Victor from Hextech at that point. So he'd already made up his mind to take out Victor and anything to do with Hextech at that point, even though he's using a Hextech weapon to do it. But anyway, so it does explain it. And I did say, and well, I think I did, but anyways, I was saying it just, it's so unlike Jace. I did say that, yeah, that it's unlike Jace to be so cold-blooded. Like he's not that kind of person, right? And despite everything, he's not the kind, he, he, violence is typically the last thing that Jace resorts to. And it's not something that he enjoys. So for him to just walk in, first of all, kill Salo without a thought, and then go all the way to where Victor is and just blast him with that with nothing no remorse nothing i was like something had to have happened something went down when he was gone for that year and now we have an idea of why he's like this like the jace we know is gone currently he might be in there somewhere but at the moment he's just the vision in his mind that is keeping him going in this world right now is how horrible that timeline was and how much he does not want that to happen so he is going to be fighting tooth nail and desperately to stop that future from ever happening and i can't blame him because it's pretty awful <laughs> it's, it's pretty darn awful but again that's one timeline and so this is why i'm hoping that now that echo is on his way back he'll be able to maybe i don't know though because like i said jace is not okay right now but maybe seeing echo and echo explaining to him that not all the timelines ended up this way might help but we'll have to see but yeah that was jace moving into echo we got to see echo again and i mentioned in the beginning of the episode the record i just realized that usually the record is is uh vi and powder above well yeah it's powder because she's a kid but in this one it was powder and echo and so i was like okay i like a little foreshadowing there but anyway we see that echo we jumped in i guess to where echo joins or falls out of whatever the weird middle time space 
places where their faces are all distorting and all that weirdness where he gets dropped is into piltover oh no zon sorry of a different dimension a different timeline and in this timeline things are pretty much as idyllic as they could be if we're being 100 hex tag has never happened because the job we see that everything in this timeline up until the explosion pretty much goes the exact same way as it did in his world right so the war between zon and piltover the fact that uh, Vander and Silco didn't get along and, and Silco almost died and, and, you know, Vander was almost the person to do it. The job of when they go to Piltover to steal the stuff, all of that happens, but where the timeline fractures is that instead of them all getting away and Powder holding on to all the stuff and, and eventually, you know, everything going down the way it did, instead, unfortunately, we lost Vi. Vi died in that job and that was kind of the breaking point for powder to decide that she didn't want to explore anything to do with that technology any further and it was enough to shake the community in Zon that we see Vander and Silco got back together. They figured out their problems, they're, they're chill, and the peace between the two areas stayed, or at least it blossomed, I would say, and actually did better. So it's crazy though, because I mean, that kind of tells me that Vi is a very pivotal character in all of this, which is good to hear that, you know, because Vi would never think she was that important, but... And I feel like in this series, there's been a lot of emphasis on Powder and her mental abilities and her her smarts, her brilliance and all that. And so out of the two sisters, they kind of make it look like all Vi does is punch things. But I really like how in this scenario, it kind of shows that Vi is absolutely the catalytic event for whole different ways that the future could go potentially. Like it just shows that her impact was a lot bigger than I think even Vi would think it was. But anyway, so I really like the way they showed it when, you know, when Echo got there. And of course he's reacting the way that he should because he, in his mind, it's been a few seconds from when he disappeared in that chamber to when he showed up in this different timeline. And he's, you know, he's fists up whenever, <laughs> whenever powder's around and he doesn't know what's going on. And then when he sees Benzo and he just, that's such a sweet moment where he sees Benzo and throws his arm around him. And he's like, I know, understandably, because for him, Benzo's been gone since he was what, seven or eight years old, right? So it's been a long time since powder's had someone who looked out for him like that. And I think it's pretty clear that Benzo was a dad to him for all intents and purposes. And he sees like this world and it's everything that is he later says is what he thought Zon could be like they're you know Clagger and I can't remember the name of the other guy like they're they're working they're innovating they're helping to you know clean up Zon they've got careers that are like promising they're not out there doing jobs anymore Vander's happily running his bar Silco's chilling out Benzo's doing what he's always done which has been like besties with Vander while also helping the community out people in Zon look happy they look clean they're dressed up I know they're, they're a pair Carol hit me immediately the way that um, even he was dressed, the way that Vander was dressed. It was all kind of a, I would say like a, a, an amalgam between the kind of funky, rocky type of stuff that you see coming out of Zon, but it also has the Piltover influence, right? Which is showing that to me that Zon has developed a bit of a middle class, right? Not everybody is dirt poor like we see in the, in the timeline Echo's from. But either way, Echo is seeing that this world is unlike anything that he could have imagined. Like he, he said that he knew that there was potential of a Zon, but he didn't think it could be like this, where everybody's genuinely getting along. There is no war. And everyone's slowly but surely moving forward, right? Maybe not as fast as it was with Hextech, but they were definitely still moving forward and progressing together as a nation versus as two divided places. So anyway, he's having a hard time. We see the Hextech is kind of giving him a bit of a hangover, if you will. But then as he's coming back, um, he finally bumps into Heimerdinger and Heimerdinger says that he actually dropped into this place a lot earlier and that it's been, like I said, about three years and he's loving it. <laughs> My guy is like, this place has been great. <laughs> He's like, I pretty much figured that you would show up. And it looks like he also thought Jace would show up at some point too. But he's like, I didn't know when you'd come, but I had a feeling you would. But he's like, I've just been chilling out. Like since I've been here, he's like, I learned how to play the guitar. I've been just chilling. Like I'm having a good old time. He's like, I feel like you should just chill. I think we, you know, we, I like it here. And I totally get it, right? Heimerdinger, that man is, oh man, that Yardle is very, very old. And when you've lived a long ass time, you start to realize you don't got to rush things. And this in his mind, he doesn't have to rush things. He has no desire to go back to the world he came from that he knew was getting completely messed up by Hex, Hex Tech. Like, He's lived enough lifetimes to just be in his cozy era. And that's what he was. He's was like, this place is great. Look at it. Everything's shiny. Everyone's happy. I can play music. I'm a bard now in the square. Like, why would I want to go back to the mess that I left? That makes no sense. So anyways, I love that he tried to pitch that to Echo. But as I mentioned in the in the reaction, bless him. But 
Heimendinger's issue is always that he looks at things from the lens of somebody who lives for thousands of years. He keeps forgetting that humans don't have that kind of time. We don't have the luxury of spending too much time with things that don't really matter to us. And for Echo, like he was very much a, rev a revolutionary in his world. So he's like, I've got people that are relying on me, people to take, take care of. I don't know what's going on back home. Like I can't just disappear. So for him, just sitting back and pretending all the things that are happening back home are just gone because he's here. Like he can't do that. That's not the kind of person he is. So he's like, I'm going to figure out, like he's like, if Hex Tech never happened here, then I'm going to have to unfortunately bring it here in order to get us home. Like we don't have to share it with the masses. Like I think that's really where things went bad the first time, but I'm using it to go home and I really like your help. And we see at first that, <laughs> at first we see that Heimerdinger didn't want to help him, but smartly Echo stroked his ego. And I like that because Heimerdinger above all is a science person. Like we know that, like science is definitely what drives him but you know I understand him wanting to take a little little sabbatical here in this world but anyhow once that happens they decide to start working on it and they realize that as much as they're trying to make progress they're missing there's a missing piece as far as understanding the hex tech and that is powder right that's one thing that even in the old world powder was able to figure out hex tech and different ways to use it a lot faster than than they could in Piltover so we see that after that um, Echo starts to feel some type of way because he's been very standoffish and actually downright rude to <laughs> to powder in this world but understandable right he's he can't separate the two initially but then he's starting to see as the time as the time goes on that this is not the same powder this powder is chill this powder is much more emotionally stable this powder is actually a, a giver like we hear vander saying that she's so selfless that she doesn't even do things for herself even though she could like he's saying you could be a top scientist you could be in a completely different level but you're down here in this bar every day helping out your friends try to hit on girls that don't like them and trying to help out everybody like he's like that that's the kind of person that powder is here and it's sad because that's the potential that powder always had if her family hadn't literally all blown up in one night but anyways so once echo starts to see that he feels bad and he basically once he realizes also that vi is gone in this world i love that he painted the mural of her in the same place that he had back in his old world and basically at that point decided to work with her and to kind of just let himself relax into that relationship because clearly they were very close at least the other version of him is very close to her and I do think that in his world, if things hadn't ended up the way they would have, I do think him and Powder would have still ended up very close because they were. They always were. But anyway, we see that they do manage to put the Hex Tech back together. And of course, feelings develop. And I know there's a lot of people out there that ship Echo and Powder and have for or Echo and Jinx, I should say. I don't ship Echo and Jinx because Jinx in the other world, I don't see that happening. But Powder? Yes, I can ship Powder and Echo because they were super cute. And we see that as time gets closer and closer to when they get close to figuring out how they can work this hex tech, we see that Echo is feeling a bit torn, like not super torn, but you know, he's realizing the appeals of this world more and more. Like the fact that he is falling for Powder in this world and he's got his dad back. And I just really love that he took those moments to like say to Benzo, like I, if I don't get a chance to tell you tomorrow, AKA I know I'm not gonna be here tomorrow. You know, I really, you mean a lot to me. You mean the world to me kind of thing. Like the fact that he got all those things out that he would have loved to say, but didn't have the chance. I think that was very therapeutic for him and also very beautiful to watch. And him having that night with, with Powder, them having their little, their little dance together and their little moments. And I really love what he said about like, you know, it'd be great if we could just freeze this moment in time because it's just, I can imagine for him, you know, Echo knowing what he do knows of his old world, this perfect moment, him, a peaceful Zon that's thriving and successful, no war, everyone he loves is still alive and, you know, someone for him to love and like it's a perfect moment. But, you know, the main reason obviously is that it's not real, why he can't hold on to it. But I really think it was just cute the way they set that whole thing up. And as I mentioned before, in the in the um, reaction, how he mentioned that in the old world, he was so focused on what was wrong with Zon that he didn't look at the beauty that existed in it and the potential. And then he really kind of regrets that he didn't put more energy into the good and trying to fuel that versus trying to fix or condemn the things that were bad, right? And it's so true. I do think the Fireflies would not have turned into what they were if he was focused on building Zon up versus trying to squash all the things that was bringing Zon down, if that makes sense. But anyway, great bars in that conversation. And then we see that when they're trying to figure out the tech that Echo figured out that he can go, that the tech can help him go back in time to a maximum of four seconds. We saw the horrible outcome of what happened when trying to push beyond that. 
But I do believe I remember from a while ago reading that Echo's ability in the game is that he can like basically can warp. Like he can go from one place to another and then like he goes in and out of time. I think I heard something like that. So I do think that's a nod to his in-game character, but maybe I'm wrong about that. But anyhow, the, that was kind of interesting. But anyways, um, we see all that happens, and then eventually Heimendinger basically fin finishes up what's necessary. I think he knew all along, to be perfectly honest. I'm not going to lie. I think Heimendinger, especially after they did the time skip thing, I think that's when he figured out exactly what needed to happen to send Echo home. But he didn't want to go, and I think he also realized there was no way that he and Echo could go and set the machine up for what needed to happen and not risk somebody possibly being vaporized which is what I think happened to Heimendinger, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping that Heimendinger just got sent someplace else. But either way, Heimendinger set things up while they were ha well, um, Echo and Powder were having their moment, and we see that he even made a piece of jewelry for her. Oh, Echo's so romantic, y'all. Stop. But anyway, um, we see all that happen, and then Heimendinger basically does the bait and switch with Echo to send them back to their world, and Echo realizes what's happening, but you know, it's too late. Like, by the time he figures it out, there's no way that, you know, he can convince Heimendinger to do things differently. And, um, yeah, we see that right there at the end when he gets it working. Like I said, Heimendinger, we don't see him. I, I don't know. I can't, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping he didn't die. But anyway, he's gone. And the Echo that is the real Echo with the face paint, with the clothes, everything is back. And then the Echo of that world returns. And so... Basically, you know, Powder showed up when all this was going down and she's kind of confused, but in the end she kind of understands because he's been very honest with her from the get-go that this was not his world. So it's it's a bittersweet moment, you know, because I, I think that I love the imagery that they gave us of Echo, the real Echo, looking at the other version of Echo and, and Powder. And I think in that, you know, moment of like, that's what my life could be, right? Like him looking at that, like that is the life that I could have had. That's, that's, a, that's a whole chapter I could have had and the real him which is you know war torn and weary and and just been through so much and it wasn't an easy decision I don't think for Echo at all I do think there was multiple times through their process of bringing everything to life that he thought about just staying and taking over this Echo's life but in the end I think he did the right thing because the Echo that who know what I'm starting to wonder what happened to the Echo that was originally there like if he took over his life where did that other Echo go? <laughs> We'll never know, and it's okay. But anyway, and then again, the look that him and Powder exchange before he disappears. You see that she's kind of confused at first, but then it kind of dawns on her, and it all makes sense. And then, of course, he's gone, and then she's got her Echo who wakes up, and he's like, what happened? And I'm like, poor girl's going to have to go through this whole amnesia storyline story again. <laughs> but again, I'm thinking that she's very happy to have her her um, Echo back. And then we see that she puts the necklace that the real Echo gave her into a drawer with a bunch of the crystals that she still has, which is interesting that they show us that but she's never used but she puts it kind of in the box and i think the fact that they showed us those crystals is kind of showing us that that box that drawer is the stuff that she cherishes and and, and kind of is curious about but she's put away and she's not dealing with it right because she's never touched hex tech since that day that her sister died and then she put that necklace from her fake echo but the real echo into that drawer of like something that means something to me but better we just leave that in the drawer and we not talk about it because like i said does that still constitute cheating because she kissed that guy that was technically not her echo but they're still the same person i don't know multiverse madness anyway that's what ended up happening and so we saw that echo is um i mean ideally i think ending up back in his timeline we know that Jace went back. We know that Jace went back. And I think the way they show the back and forth timeline of the two of them is potentially going back at the same time was interesting. But it's very hard to tell. I don't know how long Jace was in his place, like I said, and I have no idea if they came back at the same time. But we've only been shown Jace thus far. So, yeah, really, really good episode. Love the parallel storytelling. I loved the journey they put us on with Echo because we've not gotten a lot of him and, like, his thoughts and his feelings in this whole series. So I'm glad we got to spend a little time there and like i said i really hope that heimendinger is okay out there i mean in the end grand scheme of things he's been alive for a long ass time so if he's not i'm pretty sure he accepted that but i don't know i'm just gonna keep hoping that he just got sent someplace else and he's just gonna be i don't know learning a new skill like maybe it'll be a culinary masterpiece or a master chef in a different world i don't know but yeah another great episode guys i enjoyed that a lot we got a lot of character development a lot of interesting ideas of what could happen in different areas uh, of this show and in different potentials and it was a lot of fun to watch. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. I chatted a lot, but there was so much in this episode. I feel like there was a lot to cover. So I appreciate you if you stuck with me to the end of this review. And if you liked it, please show some love. And I will see you in the next video.